All right, and I was about to go in there and get the drip set up for the new basket up there in the queen palm. The sprinklers decided to go off. They didn't decide. Adam programmed to just wasn't paying attention to the time. A new leaf opening up on the banana here. How many random things can I interject before actually saying hello? Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Gingers are looking pretty good right now. If you watched last Saturday's video, got a begonia hung up there, ran a drip line, haven't set it up yet. It's the next morning from when I filmed that video. So just like 12 hours have passed. It's pretty cool out. There's new siding going on at the neighbors and a pool being put in at the other neighbor's house. There might be some noise in this video. It's gonna work through it because it's a nice cool day. Don't have many of these in July. I got something in the mail, which I teased about last week. I try not to do many teases, but it was something that I'm really excited about and was waiting until today to actually get it out, put it together, show it to everybody. I didn't want to be out here where it's like 95 degrees, this 96% humidity and no breeze setting something up. That doesn't sound like fun. Hey, B, did you say hi yet? Say hi, Turbs. How you doing? Ask everybody to comment down below to see if you knew what it was, if you would be able to remember anything I talked about in past videos and I said that I'd be replacing some things out here might know what I'm talking about. Yeah, here it is. Look at that big package. Surprisingly lightweight considering what's in there. 125 pounds with the net weight, gross weight, 132. The new glider, a beautiful glider, I think. This we're going to find out. I had tried to get this back in May and when I went to place the order, it went and said unavailable. So I was like, okay, I'm going to wait. There were some others that were similar, but were like five times the cost. That wasn't worth it to me. I enjoy the glider, but not enough to spend like a thousand dollars on one because I do think that they are an eyesore, but I find them to be very relaxing and it's just a nice thing to have outside. I don't want to spend big bucks on it and it showed up as being available again. So here we are. A big glider with a hard top canopy and this one's a convertible glider so you can put the back down and use it as a bed. Two birds with one stone. I've been saying since 20, probably 2022, 2021. How bad I've always wanted a hammock out here, but there's just no place to put one. There's some places where I could anchor some posts and set one up whenever I wanted to use it. I thought I'd end up anchoring the post and never actually setting the hammock up or taking it back down. This is just better, I think. We're gonna find out. I was planning on opening this up and sitting down and relaxing. I had my morning wake up routine while I read the directions for this thing, but I think the directions are all the way down to the bottom. Oh, and here's the cushion color. There weren't any fun colors. Beige is fine. At least it blends in with everything. Did I need to explain what's happening in this video? I would, I don't, I would hope not. Guess you never know with this channel what's going to be going on. I'm going to set up this glider. Might film some of it. I don't know. I'd rather just get it done than spend time messing with the camera, to be honest. But if it gets entertaining in any kind of way, which means I'm struggling, I'll turn the camera on. When that's done, I want to get this whole area over here put together looking nice. Clean that out, get some stuff planted, get some more stuff off the patio, get this whole area over here looking nice again. So yeah, I'm gonna get to work here and when we come back, there'll be a new glider or it'll be me <laughs> talking about what's going wrong with setting up the glider. All right, parts are sorted. Leaving the hose out came in handy. Something soft to set all the pieces on. Not having a hose reel pays off for a change. Lots of big parts, not a lot of little parts, which has me kind of confused. There's the base, there's the cushions, very thin, but they look like a standard size cushion, so I don't think it'll be a big deal if I wanted to replace those. I assume that these are the the roof. Is that what it would be called? The, you know, the lid, ceiling, what's it called? Canopy, I think those are the canopy parts. I've been looking at the instructions here and uh, they, for the most part, make sense, although I haven't made it past step two. It's a glider, it should be relatively you know, self-explanatory once you have all the parts laid out. The problem is there are some parts that I can't find. Got B-B-A-A-P-Q-M-N, that's X1. I assume those are X2s, Ws. Don't know what that is because there's a washer sitting over the top of it. But right here in this diagram, it's telling me that I need a Z. I don't have a Z, but there's also this bag that I haven't opened up yet because the knot in it is made for people with fingernails. So, so far, the biggest obstacle is getting this bag open. I think I'm gonna cut it. Seems like a waste. This is such a nice bag. In reality, I know that I wouldn't do anything with this bag. Okay, there's Ys. Those should be used to tighten and loosen the canopy. So you can tilt the canopy around and some more things. V, good to know. I need a Z. 
Those are I. Oh, no, there's one more thing in here. Please be Z. That is, um, I'm gonna say that's Z. Looks a lot more like an N to me, but I, it's gotta be Z. That's what would make the most sense. Z would be the little end cap that goes over the end of the bolt. Figured that part out. Going to uh, read through the rest of this. Read. There's not a single word written on any of these, but I like to go through and, you know, take a mental photograph of everything before I get going and start getting this thing put together. Mm -hmm. Okay, already having a problem here. X1, which is this, these little washers right here, says X1 up there. Those are supposed to go on to part M, which are these big ones right here, these big bolts. But you see, look at that. See, that doesn't work. The other ones that are labeled as just being part X, those seem to be fine. So I don't, I'm just gonna, gonna go with it, see if I can figure it out. Okay, many, many, many hours later, there's also a parrot on my shoulder, so there's gonna be some background parrot chatter. Finally got this thing put together, and here it is. What do we think? I love it. Has a hard top, no more scrubbing off moldy, crusty stuff that builds up on here. Looks like I forgot to remove a sticker. Has little tables that pop out of the sides. You need a place to put your drink. This one's longer than the other ones. You can lay down on it, hence the whole hammock thing like I was talking about. And it does fold down into a bed. Now, I don't really know the purpose of that because these cushions aren't all that comfortable. That's the only thing that I'm not thrilled about with this is the... <laughs> the cushions. They're pretty thin, but it's not hard to replace cushions. These look like a standard size. I think they're 24 inch cushions, probably something like that. And replace them, put new ones on there. That's not that big of a deal. Came with the little roll pillows. I threw a towel on there just because it needed some color. It's very beige. I like color, but I also generally feel like gliders aren't the most attractive things when it comes to outdoor furniture. Good with this blending and more. Red one stands out quite a bit and it just aged a lot. I do still think that that looks very nice. It really does. It's just, this is a little bit more of a clean vibe and it tucks away better. It just doesn't scream in your face. And the hard top canopy, that was the big draw to me. That's what I wanted the most on here is polycarbonate. Fairly well tinted panels on top. Some light comes through, but not much. And a lever on each side, you can adjust the angle of the panels. It was pretty easy to put together. There were a couple parts where having another person come in handy, like the part where you hang the bench up from the suspension bar. That would be tricky on your own, but completely and totally doable. It took a while to put together because the instructions were very much the kind where you just kind of, you had to figure it out. The parts weren't labeled correctly, pretty sure. Talked about that. There were just a few washers where they mixed up what they should have been labeled. And there were a few washers that the holes were barely existent in the middle, so they weren't even usable. So there are a couple bolts in here that don't have washers on them, which isn't great, but it's, it's fine. It's what it is. It is comfortable, just not quite as plush as the other one because these cushions are very thin. Would I recommend it? I don't know. I'm happy with it and I like it a lot, but as far as durability and all that goes, it's really just too soon to say. It doesn't feel as sturdy as the other one. The other one being one that I got in clearance from Walmart for $50 in 2019, I think. This has been pretty sturdy. Other than the fabric aging out, needing to be replaced, that's fairly normal. I did UV protect this with the Scotchgard UV stuff every year, but still things age. That's what happens when things are out in the sun. Hey Turbs, how you doing baby? Yep, yep. Having a good time, that's great. As far as colors and all that stuff goes, that's just a matter of personal preference, right? I like color, I like a lot of color. As I mentioned, though, something like a glider, I prefer for that to blend in. That's what it's supposed to do, it swings, the tables fold out, the top adjusts just as you would expect it to. Can't say anything bad about it other than the stuff I already said when it came to putting it together and the instructions being not useless, but not very helpful. But that seems to be the norm for instructions these days. It is still missing one very important thing and that's lighting. I have various types of string lights here. These were supposed to be solar powered and they're not. And these were supposed to be nice big bulbs and they're not. I'm gonna give these a try anyway. Looking at the top of this, you gotta admit, like doesn't that just scream, stick a little solar panel on me? I was hanging out under here last night, just, you know, laying down, swinging. And I was thinking this would be so cozy and romantic with some lights up here and just like lots of lights on the inside. Wouldn't that be nice? A bunch of curtain lights 
to go on the back. This one's lovely. Look at the shadow from the palm frond. I like that. That's nice. It feels nice and sturdy. Easy enough to lay down on it and just relax. Swing back and forth and chill. I don't think Cosmo's a big fan though. Doesn't seem like he likes it very much. You want to step up? Okay, no, you're gonna bite me. Never mind. I've been waiting on this for a few months, so I'm very excited about it. I'm going to grab some command hooks, get those lights hung up, stick the solar panel on there. We can see what that looks like tonight. In the meantime, actually, no, I don't have time to really film much today, but we'll come back tonight and have a look at what this looks like and then pick up with more yard work and stuff tomorrow. I think I need to go to the store. I'm almost out of potting soil. I'm sorry, okay, you need your space. I understand that. Okay, we've approached the part of the video where I overthink things. Hope you're ready. The uh, lights, these came as a set of two. I went ahead and I put one of them on here. You can see it goes all the way around. There's a piece dangling down. We'll get to that. I came back to read the directions to make sure that I had them set in the right way to get the battery charging. And because I wanted to know what kind of battery was in here. You can put more powerful batteries than these, but I don't want to take the thing apart if I don't have to. Is there a protective film on here? I can't tell. I already put one of those up. Oh, there it is. I didn't take that off of the other one. Okay, I need to do that. I had originally wanted the type of lights with the larger bulbs on them. After seeing these over there, I'm not hating these. I was thinking that I might want to return them, but it's I'm, these are pretty okay. I have to wait till tonight to really give them a verdict, right? Make sure that they get at least eight hours to charge in the sun and see what happens. Okay, here's where I'm at. There are enough of these lights to go all the way around and then through the inside. Up in there, all the way through, and around, you get it. Come back around and have a dangly bit here on the end. Do I tuck the dangly bit up and have the lights doubled up in one spot, which is gonna bother me. I could always pull it down at night, but then having one dangly bit is gonna bother me. The other set of lights on in the opposite way, so if there's a dangly bit of lights coming down on this end too, and still same thing, can tuck them up during the day and let those hang down at nighttime. I think that's the direction I'm going to go with this, but if I double up on these lights, I think that this is going to go from looking kind of cute to kind of chaotic and messy, especially since the bulbs will more than likely line up to being right next to each other. And that's gonna look dumb. If they're not centered in between each one, that's going to drive me crazy. So what would be a very simple and easy thing to do may end up taking me a very long time because I'm gonna want the bulb staggered, which means that one end is gonna dangle more than the other. I told you it's the part where I overthink things. Really the best thing to do here would probably be to just give it a shot and see how I like it. Following that logic that I just had, if I start on the opposite end instead of in the same corner but moving a different direction, could just go one, two, three, four, make sure that there's five hanging down instead of four, right? One, two, three, four. So in this corner, have five, one, two, three, four, five, and then start it up here like that. And then these should be close to alternating. Nah, well, yeah, that's pretty good. That looks like those are about even. You can't even tell there's two different strings there, right? Unless I pull it down, that's what I'll do. Definitely the right move. I don't think that it looks more messy at all because the bulbs are fairly well centered in between each other. There's spots where there's more slack than other spots, so the lights dangle a little bit more, so it's not perfect. And you know, they're not meant to be perfect. They have some are kind of at an angle. I like having the dangly bit here. I think that that would be fun at nighttime. And like I said, if it's ever bugging me, just tuck it up here like that. That's not even noticeable. Here, tuck that one in too. Tonight, come out here to check these out can pull them down, have a better look at them. I think I might still hang the string lights up on the back, even though they're not solar powered, just because I'm gonna have to put the command hooks in here regardless, the little, I didn't talk about that. That's what these are hanging up in here with, just command hooks. You can see them up there. That's the only thing I'm not crazy about is those are ugly. They don't come in multiple colors. So it's just the ones with the white adhesive on the back. Just have to look past that. I was hoping there would be enough of these lights to go across each beam in here and to do this part also, but maybe that's probably overkill. This is good, don't need to too much it, just got it. Have to wait and see how I like it first. But yeah, the curtain lights, those are going to hang off of the back of this. I don't know if you can see, but my head doesn't turn around that direction. I could stand up, yeah. They'll hang down the back, I'll hang those up, but since those plug in, I don't have to do that right now. I want to make sure these got done early in the day so they had enough time to get a lot of sun on them to see what they potentially do as far as light goes. The other ones, I'm gonna wait until the sun's off the patio some more because it's kind of toasty over here. So we'll come back later and get those curtain lights hung on. Get to see what these look like at nighttime when that's all done and then pick up in the morning. 
Okay, listen. Not a good angle for anyone. I don't want to hear shit about it. Look at, look at. Don't know if I can have that in the background. Look at. I guess maybe this wasn't the best way to probably show it off. It's so beautiful. Lights even go up and reflect on the roof panels up there. This is smart. I did a smart thing. Turbo. Turbo BP, say hi. Hi, Turbo. He likes to come over and lay next to me, which has been nifty because I can use him when I start to lose momentum to help get my swing back on. I look greasy. That's moisturizer. That's what I'm telling everybody. The solar string lights, one of the strands came on much earlier than the others, which was odd like half an hour earlier than the others they don't feel very bright compared to these because these plug in which is dumb i don't need them to plug in i wanted solar because i like to move this it's nice to be able to have it out further from the plants and everything the plants you see all the the no, never mind. Can't see that this time of night. There's a spruce tree there. You can kind of see it. And the bugs and mosquitoes can get to be kind of intense. And on really hot days, this rock wall that's back here, it's like sitting next to a radiator at nighttime. So it's nice to be able to scoot this out. That's why I wanted this to be wireless and solar powered, but this is good too. These string lights are supposed to have different color temperature options. I haven't tried that out yet because I like them on the warm white setting. And these over here have a ton of settings that are all very loud, chaotic, and crazy, which is normally my jam, but it's not so great for that relaxing vibe that I'm going for out here. This is so good. And they're kind of fun to play with too. This is good. This is, I did a very good thing. This is smart. Tranquil and relaxing. It's, during the day, I'm not gonna like seeing those string lights there. I already know that's going to bug me, but I think it's worth it for how incredibly calm and relaxing this is. Should I be showing this from outside of the glider? Perhaps, hey, there's me. There it is from looking at it. I don't really know why that matters because it's gonna be more about what it's like when you're hanging out on the glider and I think it's just spectacular. But there it is. It's also rather bright out here because I got the lights and everything on. Lighter's still there because I'm still messing with the drip up top on that queen palm. Yeah, I mean, this is great. I'm very happy with my decisions. Is that better? All right, the lens fogged up. It's filming with a foggy lens this whole time. My bad. There's another look at it. Looks nice. I never show my face when I get a short one where I was pulling everything down in the wrong direction. Or the right direction. Gravity only has one direction. I don't care. Y'all know what I mean. I'm happy with it. I should have grabbed the controller so I could change the light patterns on it, but I also don't want to ruin my experience because I'm very relaxed right now and I haven't spent a ton of time out here just chilling this year. It's mostly just been work, 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 work. So I don't want to ruin it with like flashing disco string lights back here. But maybe another time. Pick up in the morning, get some stuff done. Hello. There are a couple of plants over here that I need to get repotted, that I've needed to get repotted for a while now. I haven't gotten to it yet because these plants have been troopers. This is a variegated sea hibiscus. Isn't it beautiful? I love this plant so, so much. It's been a trooper. I had to water it a lot more last winter than in the winter prior when I had it indoors and outdoors. I had to water it a lot more than usual also. These are all signs that a plant needs to be repotted. Trunk on this has been thickening up. I keep this pretty pruned because I want to get a really big girthy trunk on this thing to make a really neat looking plant. The thing about these hibiscus is they are extremely vigorous growers when they're happy. When it's hot and dry, which they can handle, these can take some really dry, warm conditions. They don't grow at all. They just hang out. Yet end up with some yellow leaves like that one right there. Happens, temperatures here have been cool and then hot and cool and then hot. Plants don't always love that. This is one that heads up being crazy about it. Needs a new container. I have a new pot right here. Not the most beautiful thing, but it was free-ish. It came with like a hibiscus or something like that years ago. Not a giant upgrade, but the big difference that's going to be happening here with this one is new soil. This is in an old Espoma blend that I feel like just doesn't have anything in it and it drains way too quickly. And y'all know I'm a sucker for good drainage, but this is a bit much. Those plants where the hose hits it, the like you can barely even see the water. It goes right through it so quickly. Oh, or should I just bump it up into one of these big nursery containers? I know it's what I probably should do, but that's really ugly, like real ugly. I don't want to put it in that thing. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. 
Going with the smaller one, it's still an upgrade. This is a very nice blend that I think this hibiscus will really like. All-purpose potting mix. I added, I don't know, I'd say maybe 10% compost into this, so it's nice and rich. There's some of that Peter's Classic fertilizer in here that I've talked about in last week's video. There's good numbers in it for plants like hibiscus. It has the nitrogen, low range phosphorus, and then high range potassium. But a hibiscus loves. There's sand in there, there's some bark chips, some charcoal, a little bit of pumice. Things to keep it nice and airy and rich. The leaves are just, that's just because this is outside. Leaves fall in here sometimes. I think it's a blend that this will be pretty happy with. And this should be a pretty easy plant to repot. I bet that's just going to, yeah, that'll come right off. I think it would be smart to take this to the yard and knock out all that loose soil. <laughs> just beat the devil out of it. Okay. Look at that. Those are some <clears throat> turbo. That's bad. Knock it off. Roots are looking pretty good. Got most of the soil out. <laughs> Drop this in here. Roots are looking pretty cool, aren't they? I'd be concerned if they were wrapped around because this plant has been so thirsty. I am going to let it stay down extra far into this container for when I need to give it really, really big, thorough, heavy drenches, right? So that way the water can flood in there without it rushing over the sides. We can let some of those clumps get down around those roots. I was thinking this might be a good time to correct the growth of the trunk on this one. So it had gone wonky on me from the first year when I had this. When I got this, it was just a twig, maybe two feet tall. I only had it for a couple of years. It went rogue and started <laughs> growing in its own directions. So this is probably the best time to go ahead and try and straighten that out. I also, at the same time, want to make sure that there's at least a little bit of fresh soil on the outside of this root ball in all directions. Want to make sure they have access to all that new goodness that's down in there. This is great. I like this soil blend a lot. That should make for a much happier plant. Let me grab the hose, water this in. Even though this is a well-draining mix, it should drain slower than the other, partially because there are a lot smaller holes in the bottom of this container. But there are more of them. There are a lot of holes in here, but this is what I wanted to be able to do. I wanted to be able to flood the top. The other one, you couldn't do that. The water just went right through it, which is great for some plants, and I love having that kind of pristine drainage. But with a plant that's this thirsty, and even though they are drought tolerant, these are grow so, so, so much better with lots of uh, watering. I got distracted by the bubbles. Did you see the bubbles over there? I think that's a fun part of when you repot something is getting to burp the soil. I love watching the bubbles come up and getting to see that first drenching of water moving through. And I know it may look like this is not well drained enough. This is its first watering. The first saturation tends to take a little bit more water. I usually do this about three or four times, so let that fill back up. If it were to take more than like five to 10 seconds for it to drain down, then uh, I would be concerned and I would want to add something to my soil blend. But generally five to 10 seconds, somewhere in there with this much water is about what I'm looking for. Fill this for number three. It's not burping all that much, so I don't think that this is going to need much more water put into it. That should be more than enough to get the soil settled down so it can all get into the places where it needs to go. Make for a much happier plant this season. I'm glad that I found that pot. One of the other reasons I hadn't done this yet was I was trying to find a pot that I liked that I thought was big enough for this plant, but also not something that was really heavy. A plant that's very sensitive to the cold. So in the beginning of the warm season and the end of the warm season, it may get moved in and out more often than others, just when you have random nights that are cold, but maybe it's gonna warm up for the rest of the week. So it had to be something lightweight and I didn't wanna use a nursery container. So this is, That'll do the trick. That's perfect right there. I end up popping a few more holes in the bottom of that just to speed some drainage up. I only did the holes on the outer perimeter. It really should probably get one in the middle. I want to see how it does with the soil blend because this goes in a spot where I don't have any drip run to it. So I would prefer to not have to water this more than like three or four times a week. I don't want to be watering it two or three times a day like I have been doing. And this will probably drop some leaves just because I tore away at the roots and they don't like that. So may not look great the next few times y'all see it, but it should be just fine in the long run. It should be great in the long run. There's some siltiness. I forgot to mention on the surface of the soil, that's the earthworm castings. I was kind of heavy handed with the earthworm castings. It's very mild, the earthworm castings. So I'm not worried about that hurting the plant, but I did, I mean, you can see that it's, it was a bit much. It's fine, that'll flush through over time. I did go through and I added some more pumice. Okay, camera, get your together. More bark chip, charcoal all that stuff to help fluff it up even more because the plants that I'm putting up next is going to want slightly better drainage. The drainage period for that blend 
is great. The moisture retaining capacity is what I'm looking at with these and it's going to be so much better. I'm looking forward to not having to water constantly. Nice organically rich soils. You need to fertilize as often. Do have to be more on top of pest control and more mindful to pay attention to drainage and poor symptoms of root rot with plants too, right? This is more organic stuff you have going on down there. While that is good for the plants, it with a bad side too. If you have compost and soil that breaks down, it becomes muddy. Not much oxygen can get in there and you can start having issues with root rot. Okay, that was fun. Disclaimer part done. I think I want to put my beautiful, adorable, oh, it looks so cute. Sea grape. It is a bonsai. This is technically not a bonsai pot, but, oh, there's a cicada exoskeleton in there. For a very long time, I've wanted to either have a chefflera in here, one that has lots of aerial roots, or, or a sea grape. I just feel like this is the perfect container for it. And that's why I added a few more things into that mix just to help with aeration for the plant. It's not in a bonsai mix right now, if it were, then I would be cutting this up even more, right? It keeps working its way into these other soils. The whole point of a bonsai mix is for air to move around the roots. Considered a soilless blend. This is, it's still in soil. Technically a plant that's still been in training. Get some more in there. Pull some of this down, lift it up. Make sure there aren't any air pockets under there. That's the other thing I like about this container is that it's not so big and wide that should I decide to move this into a more traditional bonsai style pot someday, I won't have to tear apart those roots too terribly much. And with bonsai, when you're doing it right, you can really go ham on those roots, but I'd rather not. If you don't have to, why would you, right? Well, actually, there are a lot of reasons when we're talking about bonsai. That's not the point here. Get centered, gently tap the soil down. I don't really pack soil down. I usually just let the first few waterings work the soil down to where it needs to be. Like I lightly tap it into place. Especially when I have this much room to work with on the container. Oh, and the same thing needs to be said about the bark. Bark chips, those break down over time. Oh, look at that. That is so thin and basically useless. Is what you get with the big box store, the, what is it? The Better Homes Orchid Mix. Not one of my favorites, but I always keep a bag around for situations like this where I have some repots to do and I want to get things going, but maybe I don't have perlite or something else laying around, or maybe I need to fluff up an aeroid mix, but don't need a lot of it. Yep. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. That looks adorable. It's not where I plan on keeping it, but I just figured there's a better view so you can see the beauty of that pot with the lovely hot tub cover in the background. Go ahead, give that a nice drink, water it in. I would like to top dress this with some gravel, but I don't think I have any that I like. I'd like to use some of the tumbled Pacific or Mexican beach pebbles. I think that would look nice, something dark and smooth over the surface of this. I have plenty of the chipped lava. That's not really the vibe I'm going for with this one. I could do sand, just like a layer of white. No, I don't want to do that because that's going to turn into a big mess whenever I go in and do a heavy watering. Oh, that looks so perfect. I love it. It's so nice. Pretty well centered to me. That soil, everything moved through just so I want it to. There is still that silt coming up from the excess earthworm castings. But again, that's not going to hurt the plant at all. Earthworm castings are so mild, it will be fine. And the earthworm casting I'm using, the bag of castings is like a year and a half old and set outside all winter. So I don't know if it's even any good. That's why I went kind of heavy handed with it. Not kind of, I definitely went heavy handed with it when I was blending up. I just wanted to get rid of it. So I've dumped too much of it into that mixing batch. Over time, the excess of that will wash out the bottom of this container. Same thing with that hibiscus. It's not going to be a problem. Yeah, I'm thinking I should go root around the garage. I, in my head, I have some pebbles that would work for this, but I, that might just be false memories or old memories. I, I don't know. I'm going to go look. Okay. See, I have some options here. White gravel, this weird glitter sand stuff, something nice. Rainbowy marbles, sand, dinosaurs, seashells, that white gravel, or this stuff. Nice looking river rock. I don't want to use that. Uh, there we go. Look at that. I knew there was something in here that would work. This is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Like This is exactly what I would have been buying from the store. Oh, that reminds me. We need to talk about these. I got an identification. Hopefully I won't forget to talk about it. A little bit sticky from having been in the garage for who knows how long, but that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. I think that's a really nice clean look that finishes this off perfectly. Clean, smooth, just the right contrast, still nice and earthy, doesn't look too fake. I don't want it to look artificial, right? The whole point of the bonsai is for the miniaturization of nature, miniature trees. That's perfect. 
I love that. Love how that came out. I love when things are easy and they look nice. Okay, and the rest of the things that I need to repot are large. <laughs> big plants so i'm gonna have to get more soil before i can do anything with those i have some containers that i would like to can't do that either don't have soil don't have soil don't have time to get to the store these over here this is what i want to talk about i finally have an identification i've talked in multiple videos about loving these plants that i've had them in the garden for many many years but i forgot what they were called and couldn't find them listed online anymore as to what they were i was pretty sure i had gotten them from either brian's botanicals there's turbo's head that's a good scale turbo Put your head here. Good boy, see? Look at the size of the leaf on that thing. Not this, don't ignore that, not that. This right here, turbo don't, that's not for you. Turbo, I know it was confusing, but it's not for you. I'm sorry, baby. Like the last four or five years, been trying to track down the name on this one and finally found an old invoice and it said Typhonium giganteum, which is now Soronatum giganteum. It's a giant voodoo lily. That's what I figured because the flower was voodoo lily the bulb was voodoo lily everything about it screamed voodoo lily not so much the foliage though but that's why i love this plant look at that it looks so much like a xanthosoma compare that right there this plant right there with this one over here okay they're not identical but you can see the similarities right between it's a color variation it's a lime zinger it's supposed to be a lighter more chartreuse green and these can have that lighter green on them. The more sun these get, the more prolific they will be. That was fun. It was like a memory bomb hit me and I just went down memory road as to all the reasons that I got this plant, why I was excited about having it. And then I had forgotten what the heck it was and it wasn't being sold anymore from either of the places where I thought I had ordered it from. So I couldn't look it up. Yes, now that I know what it is, I have four more sitting on a shopping cart on Etsy. This is an excellent plant. I do nothing with this plant. Dies back every year, comes back around mid to late June. Sometimes when it's really, really hot and harsh out during the summertime, they'll yellow and die back, but not always. And I think that having more of these up on the hill, up in these two little corners would look really nice. There's a lot more sun up there. And in the future, there'll be some big evergreens on each side of the staircase that's up there. They only get about 20, 24 inches tall, but the leaves on them, they're just so big. It, to me, it reminds me of a Vichii anthurium mixed with an alocasia of some kind. Just fun, beautiful plants. Are you done? You tired, BB? Okay, well, that was fun. Plunkin, where are you going? Come back. Plunkin. Plunkin. It's not very ladylike pumpkin sticking your dot up in there for everybody to look at. Hey, Derbs. Hi, baby. Did you miss me? Of course. You got right in the pool. Left him alone for about 30 seconds. I went inside to grab the camera and forgot to grab batteries. It's meant to grab the camera. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's the next day. It is extremely windy. This thing's taken off a few times. Keep having to retrieve it from over by the neighbor's house. Trash everywhere. It's been blown off the table, which is fine. I need to pick up the trash, get that out to the recycling and everything. But I haven't been able to film because it's just nonstop. This thing has been holding up so well compared to every other umbrella. And I know it's just because it doesn't have the tilt function. There's nothing in the middle of snap when there's a strong breeze. I've never had this one take off on me though. And it just keeps... Whew, flying away. I've been sitting here at the table like you have to get up and grab it and pull it back down. I'm assuming because the wind is coming from the south, which I just, I don't, my yard apparently isn't used to that. And the beauty of all this wind is it's pushing in a warm front. I mean, it's already like 97 or 98 degrees outside right now, but it can get warmer and it's going to over the next few days. I don't really know how much more is going to be happening out here because well, just, that's too damn hot. I'm only going to be out here watering plants in that kind of heat. That's it. I'm not doing anything else out here. Probably swim and stuff, but projects are on pause while in the triple digits. As long as the humidity is over 80 or 90 percent, things are on pause. When it's nice and dry out, not that the triple digits feel good, but there's a big difference. A huge difference. Like right now, it's 97. Doesn't feel that bad in the shade. There's a breeze. It's only like 60 something percent humidity right now. I'm not hating it. I just didn't need to turn to a weather forecast. Glider is amazing. I absolutely love the glider. I forgot to turn the fan around. I'm gonna need that on the camera. Right, that's enough of that. Here's what's going on now. Again, more things that aren't plant related because I guess that's the theme of the video. Got some things repotted so it's not like nothing's going on. This is a float valve. Probably seen these before. I got this to put on the fountain over here. It needs water about every three days, something like that. That's pretty normal for the summertime with a fountain. It takes a pretty long time to fill it up though. And the whole point of that fountain is to always have clean water out here for the dogs to drink. So I thought I should put a float valve on there. I have a water line that's run right up there 
that black line right there that goes around to the shower. So that's always switched on. I have drip lines everywhere that I could plumb this into, but then it would only work when the drip turns on and then it would take pressure away from the drip and it would only have a certain number of minutes to do the refit. That doesn't make sense when there's a line that's always connected right there. Nothing's ever easy though. I've used so many of these little mini float valves, usually installed them into barrels and trash cans for the fish tanks. I hook those to my RO systems, the RODI system they have in the house fill that up with the RODI water and use that to mix salt water for the fish tank. And there's a line on it for drinking water too, but that's not, that doesn't have to do with the float valve. Didn't even need to say that, but I've set up many of these. This one I ordered from Amazon instead of from a actual like marine supply company. This is real janky. For one, it's just weird because most float valves you would have installed like this. And then when this goes up like that, that would turn the water off, but not with this one. If the water moves it up, then that's gonna turn the water on. So it has to be installed like this, and there's a screw on here. You can adjust the angle of the bobber right there. And in there, it's gonna be really hard to see, but that little hole that's in there, that's where the water comes out. So when this floats up, that shuts it off when it drops down, it'll let it back out. Float valve, not that complicated, but the size on this is, odd all the ones i've ever installed were generally a quarter inch or a half inch and this is like five eighths i was gonna use one of the step bits but the step bits they make me kind of nervous how about you guys get nervous with these only because it's so easy to push too hard and go just a little bit too far and over here i had a really hard time finding a uh, bit in here this where the mandrel with it the mandrel is the it's well it's, it's I figured it out. We I, we didn't even need to be talking about any of this. This is the longest way of just saying, I'm about to install a float valve on my fountain. And that's what's been going on. I got excited that I was able to get the drill bits out though, because I don't get to use these all that often. I don't really build stuff. And uh, not anymore, not that I ever really did, but there were always things that needed holes drilled. Love drilling some holes and just, it's been a while. Don't twist that up. That's not what I meant. Get your mind out of the gutter. Uh, I was going to set y'all up on the tripod while I go over there and set this thing up but uh the tripod's just gonna blow over i don't have any sandbags filled up to hold it down so we'll just come back and see if there's a float valve working actually i just realized that setting up an auto refill on a fountain or bird bath might be something people are actually interested in might want more detail on how to do that it's pretty self-explanatory but i'll go ahead and bring you along step one turn the water off fun get to crawl through some palm trees to get that done so underneath that this one okay there we go. This is why we love palm trees. They're nice and flexible. There you go. Water's off. Work way back through here. I'm sure the fallen palm trees bug people, but there's just, it's so windy. There's no point in picking them up. They're going to blow back over. It's more damaging to pick them up and let them blow back over than it would be to just leave them where they are. Oh, I need to take that bit out of here. Step two, know what size hole you need to drill it. And then drill the hole. This is going to be difficult. Figure out how high you're going to want the water. Remember that the float valve can be adjusted. I do want the water level to be fairly high. So I'm going to come in right around here. You get any closer? Can you see it? Kinda? No, it's over there. Position that float valve. However, it's supposed to be positioned to the right direction. Pardon the background noise. I think I'm gonna be able to use the washer on this because the pot is so thick. I might not even be able to get this thing threaded. I might have to take the seal off of it too and just hope for the best. Ideally, obviously, you wanna make sure you have these because the gaskets are what make things waterproof, but it's too thick, so they had to come off. Worst case scenario, I can pop it back off if need be and put like a liquid seal around it, some Vaseline, something like that. All right, and then the water line pushes right into that connector. These are push fittings. And they're, I know that's very hard to see. They have a piece on them that when you push it in, you can pull back out. But if you just put it in like that, it, they lock into place. They're very useful, I like them a lot. Then go to your water line. This is just a half inch line right there. <laughs> pop the hole. There's still some pressure in that line. I shut the water off, but uh, oh, I did it. I shut the water up to the other thing, not this thing. Uh oh. And then in a panic, get the water line installed. I can fix that leaky part of it later and <laughs> hope for the best. We're just trying to not get the camera wet. There it is. See what I mean? That's backwards. That's not how float valves are supposed to work. I have a Phillips head screwdriver out here so I can adjust this down. I'm going to have to lower this down, but see when the water level's full, that'll shut off. 
so I need to drop that way, way, way down. I know what you're thinking. Jeff, you installed it upside down. I didn't. I read the directions, and there are other people in the reviews who are saying the same thing about this wonkiness on this float valve. So hopefully, when the water level is right around there, that'll shut it off. This is a shut-off valve right there. So if I need to, I can turn it off with that and keep working with it from there. Other nice thing about having a line run like this is I can put an inline filter, a carbon filter, something in there very, very, very easily. That way the water is being refilled will be even cleaner, even better. Is the noise getting annoying yet? I know I'm getting annoyed by it, so I bet y'all are too. Much better. I've wanted to do that for years. I'm so glad to have that done. I am going to have to remember now that the, uh, what is it? Oh, to keep it cleaned out, right? Because since this is going to be topping itself off, I'm going to have to remember to actually come in here and clean it out because the whole point is clean water for the dogs. There were a bunch of June bugs and things floating around in there when I went over there just to install that float valve. It's probably part of a morning routine. I have a little fish net out here I can use to scoop things up with. It is the next morning. I ended up spending the rest of the night fighting with the drill bit trying to get the chunk of plastic out of it. Beautiful, well, not, it's, it's pretty hot, like a hundred and one, I think. But surprisingly, in the shade, with a fan, not so bad. The humidity is only like 55%, which is great for humans, and even Turbo, who's dry, which is odd. Don't know how long that'll last. Oh, that's not gonna last. Okay, good. I was about to take his Frisbee and throw it in there for him and make him get in there and get wet, just because it seems too warm to not be wet when you have fur. He's never one you have to entice to get in the pool, so it's a little bit odd that he waited this long to get in, but that's neither here nor there. Low humidity. That can be the kiss of death when it comes to the heat outside in the garden. Depending on your plants, right? High humidity and heat can also have the same effect with things like lavender and cactus and certain types of euphorbia, lots of plants. I've been sitting here looking at this Monstera just thinking, Okay, it's warm out, so you're not gonna focus. There we go, okay. When we start pushing triple digits here, that's when I back off of planting things unless it's something that really needs to be planted. With the variegated hibiscus, that need to be planted. I do still have some smaller impatiens that are still in their four inch containers where I don't actually have a spot lined up for them right now, but I may go ahead and just bump them up into one gallon containers so that there's something around their root ball that will stay wet for a long time because the plastic containers are just drying out like crazy. I'm thinking with certain plants like the Thai, I should probably just move this. Looking like it's gonna be this way for the next 10 days or so, usually July here, we hit triple digits a few times. And then in August, it cools off. I don't know what's going to happen this year because this year has not been normal. Last year really wasn't either, but with this wind, I'd say that it's, you know, the El Nino, which we should be calling El Diablo. That's blowing in with fury. I know it's already been in Texas and Arizona and all you places that are already very hot are now even hotter. Well, I can only assume that's why it's so windy. That's another thing that's throwing me off. I, I keep getting off track here. With the plants that like a high humidity and uh, these triple digit temperatures, I think the best thing to do would be to go ahead and move them into the shade. There really are only a few that I'm all that concerned about. I have an Alocasia and a Dracaena that are just laying on the ground because the wind kept blowing them over. Those are going to be easy to move. This one, I'm thinking I may just, if I can, if physically possible, pick the pot up and set it up there on the wall. It would only be back by like a foot or two, if even, but I think that would probably be enough to get a good chunk of that foliage back into the shade, I think. I don't really know. Well, I'm gonna give that a try and then start poking around and seeing what else, you know, there's some plants that aren't going into the ground until fall time or really like late August into September, start doing fall gardening projects. Those should probably all get moved somewhere else just to ease the amount of watering we're gonna have to be doing. So it's not just about the plants, it's also about us, the gardeners, right? How much time do we wanna spend outside in the triple digit temperatures watering plants? I don't wanna spend a ton. I don't mind being outside when it's in the triple digits, but I don't like to just be standing still, especially in the sun, that's gross. I wanna be moving, maybe gently and doing other. I'm supposed to be, I'm gonna move this. Can you tell, the ADD is strong this morning, like real strong this morning. Uh, I suppose this is acceptable. I prefer the way it looks when it's over there, but this is going to be better for the plant during this dry spell, well, dry heat spell. Heat wave, that's the word, term, not word. And that opened up a spot to put some other things that need to be moved into 
better conditions. The Dracaena, this plant, it can take the heat and it can take the sun, but the wind keeps knocking it over and I have a get back here. So may as well just put that right there for right now until we get out of this spell. Yeah, that's fine. And then the Angeloba, same deal with this one. Actually, no, it's not. This thing's been a spider mite magnet and I've been spraying it to keep them off of there. And it's been pretty successful, but I don't wanna go cram this into a corner with a bunch of plants where there's no airflow. That seems like a really bad idea. So instead, I will just set it over here where there's a sprinkler. I, mean, that's, I can't leave it like that. There, that's, that'll work. A Little bit more shade and it's right next to a sprinkler head. So is that going to inhibit the water from going up there? It might. Up here is more important. You can see the arbs. They're not liking the drought and the heat either. Not at all. I'm pretty sure those are just dead. It can hang out over here. It's fine. It's not a plant that I am very concerned about. And this is a spot with multiple drip heads and sprayers. Lights more filtered. It'll be fine there. And then the hydrangeas. These, these will be good over here. That'll be a much better spot for those dappled light. Instead of just sitting out on the blazing pavement over here, this should keep them much happier. Don't want to forget, I put a Thanksgiving cactus with a schlumbagera back here that's going to get way too much shade if I leave it there. I'll just tuck that down in there with the other one for now. And there's my sign that it's time to go inside. I don't know if that showed up on camera, there's just clouds of dust out here. Kind of glad to have that mystery solved though. We'll get back to this. I told you the ADD is strong this morning. I cleaned the uh, canopy off on this last night and look at that. She had me wondering because it doesn't seem that dusty. I mean, it is. We haven't had a ton of rain. We've been kind of catching up with the drought conditions. It's been a minute since we've had heavy rain. Anyway, the machinery started going. I bet you can hear it. They're spreading gravel up there to put it in the pool. And then a cloud of gravel dust went through here and it got a little bit harder to breathe. And then I realized, oh, that's what that's about. That's why I've been having to hose everything off out here like once or twice a day for the last few days. Good to know. Actually glad to know because there have been certain things I've been avoiding doing. Like my, I have some friends who want to go hiking and I'm just like, eh, I don't know. I'm coughing a lot, can't breathe. But now I know I just need to throw a mask on if I'm out here while they're doing the stuff up there. And that should be resolved within a week or so. That's not a big deal. Overall, this'll do. I like this better than before. So I would call that progress. I pulled all the stromanthes out from under here. They're tucked, you can't even see them. They're behind a leaf on the Monstero, way back here. You can try. Maybe you can see them through the leaf. Nah. Well, there's a micro sprayer up there in that container that's going to spray around, keep these plants watered during the heat spell. Tucked things further into the shade, got things cleared out and cleaned off some more. I did install another drip line down here. We'll talk about all that in the next video. I think the next video is going to be garden tour time. Technically, this one should be, but I had stuff I wanted to get done. Really, I just, it was the glider. I wanted to get the glider set up. Didn't want to wait till after the garden tour to get that set up. I'm going to move the iguana into the shade too and rerun. It has a sprayer to help him stay well hydrated. I'm going to put him somewhere else. The next few days and the palm trees are just, I, here they are. What I've been doing these last couple days since the wind keeps blowing them over is Last night and the night before, I set them up, gave them a very heavy watering, and then uh, I came out in the morning and they were down again. It's not something I'm searching for a solution to, only because uh, we've made it this far into the year and they haven't been blowing over. I think maybe once or twice they have. But once this front passes through, I'm not thinking they're going to keep blowing over. If they are, I'll run to the hardware store, grab some sandbags and stuff, and pile those up around the pots. I actually, I'll probably end up doing that anyway, since I mentioned I need to get potting swell. That's why there are some plants that didn't get repotted. And there's still some containers that I would like to do. So I need some more soil. And it's going to be too hot to really do any yard work for next week's video. So may as well go out and see what's at the, there's not going to be anything at Lowe's. It's not likely, but you can get some soil. Maybe pop out at a nursery somewhere and see what's going on. I don't know. I'm not trying to plan for all that just yet. Hope everybody stays safe. Let me know if you like the glider. I really like it. The only reason that I'm not linking it is because it feels cheap to me. So I want to give it some more time. I've had it for 10 days now. This video stretches back fairly far. That's 
partially why things are so choppy and so much randomness has been happening. May not even be noticeable because that tends to be the flow of how I do things around here anyways. I want to give it some more time before I would recommend it to anybody. I don't like suggesting things if I haven't given them a good try. I'm gonna measure those cushions and look into getting something that looks a little bit nicer and is a little bit more thick. For the lights, I'm pretty sure we talked about those. I love the way they look at night during the day. Bothers me a little bit. Kind of took it from classy to trashy, but it's, I'm okay with that because it's very relaxing. Hang out on that at nighttime. I've really been enjoying it. Like really, really, really been enjoying it. It's probably my favorite thing out here this summer other than plants and planters. Yeah, it's time to go. Again, hope y'all are staying safe from the heat. Remember, if you start to feel too hot, go inside. Damp claws around your wrists, drape one around your neck when you're outside watering. Frequent breaks. Drink your water, a little sprinkle of salt in there, just a tiny bit, help you stay hydrated. And be careful. Can anybody hear anything I'm saying? I'm trying to hold the mic closer to my mouth, but I don't, it's probably all for nothing. Okay, well, as you can see, I do still have some watering left to do out here and a little bit of cleanup that needs to happen. So I'm gonna get on that, get into the weekend, and uh, hope they all are doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.